Hey guys, it's Jake and in 2019 I went to Kyoto, Japan and in this video I'm going to show you the top 10 things that you can do when you're there. Kyoto, the former capital of Japan, is famous for its over 2,000 religious Buddhist temples, gardens, imperial palaces, Shinto shrines, and traditional wooden houses. It is one of the best preserved cities in Japan, with many of the sites being listed as a World Heritage Site. It is also known for formal traditions such as Kaiseki Dining, which is multiple courses of precise meals, and geishas, which are often found in the Gion District. Kyoto is home to 1.5 million people and has hot and humid summers and relatively cold winters with occasional snowfall. Kyoto's rainy season begins around the middle of June and lasts until the end of July, which was right when I was there trying to bike around. Lucky me. And number one, the bamboo forest at Arashiyama. One of the most popular things to do in Kyoto is to check out the bamboo forest. I'm not gonna lie, the pictures are pretty cool online, but that was not my experience. It was extremely crowded and not at all peaceful as they made it out to be. So just make sure that you go early in the morning when no one is there. If you plan to use Google Maps to get to the bamboo forest, they have it listed wrong. So I have a link in the description, which will take you to a map I picked up when I was there. That'll help you find it easier. Number two, a Fushimi Inaritasha. This is another iconic thing to do in Kyoto. Inari was originally and still is the god or kami of rice and agriculture. It is also worshipped as the patron of business, and each of the roughly thousand arches or tori were donated by Japanese businesses. The shrine sits at the base of Inari Mountain, and you can hike it if you want. The hike is pretty easy and about halfway up there's a lookout that I recommend you stop at if you're only wanting a view. I went the whole way up thinking there would be a better view, but it was just more shrines. I did stumble across a bamboo forest that I thought was bigger and less crowded than the famous one in Arashiyama. Number 
And number three, Kayomiza Dera. This Buddhist temple in Eastern Kyoto opened in 778 AD. Kyoto. Before the Aikondo Temple. It is the head temple of Japan's Jodo Shu Buddhist sect. The temple is famous for its fall foliage and it's prominent in the past as a center of learning. You'll need a ticket to get in. And number five, Roenji. Zen temple with Japan's most famous rock garden. You'll need a ticket to get in. If you guys like what you're seeing, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button. It will just mean that YouTube will send out this video to more people. And number six, Hikikakuji Temple. Its official name is Rokuanji, but you might as well call it the Golden Temple. It was a retirement villa of the shogun Ashikaga Yashimitsu that turned into a Zen Buddhist temple after his death in 1408. You'll need a ticket to get in. If you guys want to be around when I post my newest video, do not forget to subscribe. And number seven, Genkakuji. Built in 1482 as a retirement home for Ashikaga Yashimatsa, it was modeled after Kinkakuji, which was his grandfather's retirement villa. And after his death in 1490, it was converted into a Zen temple. You'll need a ticket to get in. And number eight, Senju Senjendo. You'll need a ticket to get in and was why I wasn't able to check it out because I was running low on cash. Officially known as Renji Oen, it's an iconic Buddhist temple known for its 1,100 life-size wooden statues of the goddess Canon. 
The temple was originally built in 1164 for the Emperor Go Shirinkawa. Number 9, Nijo Castle. It is a World Heritage Site and was built as a residence, not for defense, for one of the most powerful men in Japan. The castle consists of two rings of various buildings and gardens. You'll need a ticket to get in. Number 10, Tenruji. Originally built in 1339, it remains the most famous Buddhist temple in the Arashiyama district. And I do have an honorable mention, which is kind of an obvious one, but you have to try the local food. So things like udon noodles, sushi, ramen, and a different kind of egg and ham sandwich. I really like my time in Kyoto and wish I was there for longer. The hardest part is to be able to maximize your time because there's so much to do. But if you guys wanna see what I did when I was there, I'll put the link down in the description. I will also link in different articles about what you can do, where to eat, and stuff like that. And if you guys wanna be around for when I post my next video, do not forget to subscribe. See you next time.